So hi, my name is Catherine. I'm going to talk a little about my work and a little about a project I worked on where we looked at turning a 1920s radio into a 21st century exhibit. I'm a new media engineer at the Science Museum. So what does that mean? Well, I don't make websites, which somebody said to me the other week. So what do I do? I'm part of a great team in the new media department. We have project management, software developers, and myself, I work on the hardware. My favourite quote about what our department does was from Kat Nielsen. She's the head of the contemporary science department, and she said, new media, they bring the rainbows. <laughs> My day-to-day -day work is working on the hardware that goes into the digital interactive exhibits. So I work with computers, projectors, audio, video, headphones, speakers, all that sort of thing. Um, it's really important we get this stuff right so that the work our developers do, we let their creative work shine and also it means that the exhibits that we produce really engage the visitors. So moving on, next year we have a gallery opening, it's called Information Age. The previous gallery was the shipping gallery that was open for, for 50 years. So Information Age has got a lot to live up to. It's going to be a permanent gallery. It could be open for 50 years. I was asked to work on a prototype of an object um, to find out if we can get the visitors interacting with the replicas of museum objects. Will they connect the replica object that they're interacting with with the real object that sat behind a glass case? And most importantly, as we're the Science Museum, will this interaction explain the science behind the object? It's an information age gallery. It's going to explain communications for the last 200 years. I looked at a few different technologies to uh, produce an object for. We looked at things like telegraph and Morse code and settled on radio. I really like the idea of doing radio because I thought I'd be able to do things like knobs and dials and buttons for people to press. What I was actually given was this. It's a 1920s <laughs> crystal set radio. And it's designed to look like a book. It's not the most engaging object. So in 1920s, the BBC 2LO transmitter only transmitted on one frequency in London. Only found out this morning that today is the 91st anniversary of its first transmission. So I really like the connection of coming to the BBC to talk about it. The cat's whisker and crystal on the radio, well, the cat's whisker actually is about the same thickness as a real cat's whisker. So it makes interacting with something like that very difficult. There's not a lot of interaction. I started prototyping with post-its, how we could get this interaction. Um, just right, drawing the, the cat's whiskers in the crystal, moving the, pot, pot, the, moving the pro, post its around on, 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 on post-it notes. That's my first idea, was to have, it's not very well drawn, but to have a physical pivot, but right, replace the real cat's whiskers with a small um, Android tablet where you would see on the screen the, the cat's whisker and the crystal moving together. Didn't really go down that well. Didn't really um, show the science behind how a radio works. So had to have a bit of a rethink on this. What we came up with was rather showing the crystal uh, interaction. At the front of the radio, you do see the tuning coil. So we looked at doing some interaction with the tuning coil. As I've just mentioned, um, BBC only sort of had one transmitting frequency when it first started. Did come up with other ideas. Looked at, well, could we show the different radio frequencies that have been used throughout the years? That was felt to be a bit stepping away from the truth of, of the actual object. It was suggested to just randomise where the frequency is on the... Um, scale that's shown on the radio, but again, that would be completely false, and as a science museum, that doesn't go down well. Fortunately, not long after 2LO started transmitting, uh, radio spread throughout the country, and they started transmitting on different frequencies. 
that's come out really badly and you can't probably see it, but you can maybe see the other places. So after London, we've got Manchester, Birmingham, Newcastle, Cardiff, Glasgow, uh, and other places came out shortly. So we were able to get people using the radio um, and getting sort of real life results. The radio that I came up with is a prototype. It's really rough. It's just cardboard and some bad photoshopping. <laughs> so that's roughly what we had when we put it into gallery on test. And we just had to set the cardboard radio up with some headphones so people could hear the um, 1920s recordings and a screen which, when it was running, just showed a map with a representation of a, a frequency. And as they moved around the dial, they could hear the different um, transmissions and the different places would be highlighted. It got some really great feedback and the work that we've done will feed back into the Information Age Gallery that opens next year. I really hope you can come and look at it and bring your kids, bring your family. Uh, I think it's going to be a great gallery and with some great stuff in it. Um, that's a little bit about me. I'm M underscore FQ on Twitter. I blog at Bring the Rainbow. Thank you for listening. <laughs>